Hey everyone, Sam here, welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to show you how to paint clouds. Now there are obviously loads of different types of clouds and in this painting I focus on painting cumulus clouds which are those fluffy clouds that look like bits of floating cotton wool. I will be making more videos on painting clouds in the future so stay tuned for those. If you're new to this channel and it's your first time watching, welcome and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I've written some lesson notes that accompany this video and I've put the link in the description below so check that out there. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, let's roll the tape. The inspiration for this painting comes from the coast of Wellington in New Zealand. And Wellington's the capital of New Zealand and I actually lived here for a couple of years. Due to the location of Wellington between the bottom of the North Island and the top of the South Island, and its proximity to the mountains in the South Island, it's a windy place as air is funnelled through the Cook Strait. However, this dramatic coastal weather is always great reference for painting clouds and seascapes. I'm working on a piece of loose medium weave Belgium linen which I've taped to a board with masking tape. The painting itself measures 22.5 centimetres by 30 centimetres and I've left a few centimetres excess around the painting so that the artwork can either be mounted on stretcher bars or to a board once it's finished. The advantage of painting on loose linen or canvas is that you can decide the dimensions of the painting that you want. They're easier to package and ship if you wish to send your paintings overseas. And also they take up much less space which is handy if you're travelling. I'm using oil paints for this painting but you could also use acrylics instead. I've toned the linen with a layer of burnt sienna which just helps to warm up the painting and helps with colour and tone. And I begin sketching out my composition with a number one round brush and burnt sienna mixed with liquid. Liquid is the medium that I'm going to use in this painting to improve the flow of the paint and it's also got the added advantage that it speeds up the drying time. The first thing I do when I begin to sketch out this composition is to establish the horizon line which I do freehand. Now you can use a ruler or masking tape if you want to but I prefer to do it freehand as I think it has a more painterly look. And when painting seascapes never have your horizon line in the middle of the painting. Either go for a lower horizon or a higher horizon as from a composition perspective this looks much more engaging. So I've started out with a lower horizon line and then I've sketched out the headland in the distance and then started forming the shape of those clouds. I need to be a little more accurate where the clouds are going to go as this is one of the main features of this painting. I then mark in where the rocks in the foreground are going to be placed and then the breaking waves. The colours I'm using for this painting includes Titanium white, burnt sienna, yellow oxide, cadmium yellow, quinacridone crimson, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue and thalo green. This painting loosely incorporates a circle composition where the main area of interest are the sunlit breaking waves. However, the clouds are also one of the main features of this painting which is part of the reason I've kept the rocks in the foreground in shadow and more subdued. The clouds also subtly lead the eye towards the illuminated ocean waves. Once I've sketched out my composition, the first thing I do is I establish all my dark values and shadows first. So at this stage of the painting, I'm not really worried about colour. I just want to establish roughly what the tonal dynamic is going to be in the painting. And I find that establishing the darks first is the easiest way to do this. I begin with the sky and the lightest of my dark values, the cloud shadows. 
Value refers to how light or dark a subject is. Clouds and sky are generally some of the lighter values within the landscape. There are exceptions, of course. There are some dark shadows within these clouds, and I start to block those in first. And for this I'm using a combination of titanium white with a little ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. The burnt sienna being a dark orange desaturates the blue as orange is opposite to blue on the colour wheel. I usually try to keep my cloud shadow mixtures on the blue side, as I don't want to risk the clouds looking muddy. I personally try and keep my colour combinations when I'm painting clouds and sky more simple so that I can achieve cleaner colour. I'm going to use these cloud shadows to gauge the other shadows within the painting and the overall tonality. I have to be careful not to make those cloud shadows too dark as I don't want those clouds jumping forward in the painting. Whilst I want some attention on the clouds, I still want it to sit back in the landscape. Some of the cloud shadows in this scene also have a slight violet tint to them. So in a couple of areas, I've just introduced a little bit of quinacridone crimson to my mix. But I've only used this mixture for the clouds on the left side of the painting. Next I move on to the headland. And the shadows here are much darker than the shadows in the clouds. But I'm still going to use my same colour combination, which is ultramarine blue, some burnt sienna to desaturate, and titanium white. I also mix in a very small amount of quinacridone crimson, just to give it a violet tint. But overall I want to hold back a little on the burnt sienna, so that the colour has a blue cast to it. Again this helps to make the colour look cleaner, and also helps to avoid it looking muddy. Once I've painted the headland, I then focus on the darkest zones in the painting, which are the rocks in the foreground. And I'm using just ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, and just filling in some of those dark accents, which are mainly within the cracks and the bases of the rocks. Now the painting might not look like much at the moment, but here I've established three tiers of depth. I've got my cloud and sky, then the headland, and then the rocks and the sea in the foreground. And I can use this to work the overall tonality of the painting. So once this is done, I can start thinking about painting the major zones that are in light and adding my colours. So here I go back to the furthest zone, and of course the main subject of this painting, and that's the sky. And I start painting the areas of the clouds that are in full sunlight. For this I mix a combination of titanium white with a little burnt sienna, and I'm actually going to allow my cloud highlight mix to combine and mix in with the cloud shadows, and I'll be blending these colours together on the painting itself. Because clouds are amorphous, they can be a little tricky to paint. So the best thing to do is first figure out where the light source is coming from, which in this painting is on the left side. This also helps to make it easier to define where the shadows are going to sit. But first of all, I find it easier to just get some paint down on the linen and then work from there. For the cloud highlights that are in the distance, I want them to recede further. So I add a little more burnt sienna to my mix. This makes the value of the colour a little darker, and so it starts to sit back within the painting. As white is the lightest value, it will have a tendency to jump forward within the painting. Once I've added my major zones of highlights within the clouds, I can then use my existing shadow mix and go back and start to blend in some of those colours and define the shape of some of those clouds. At this stage of the painting I'm using loose painterly brushwork and I'm also using a number 6 flat brush which is quite large even for a painting this size. But this is actually ideal for painting clouds. I paint in the cloud highlights quite quickly using loose gestural brush marks. And then I mark in where the lightest areas of the clouds are going to go, where the maximum amount of sunlight is reflecting off them. 
For this I add in a little bit of yellow oxide into the mix just to give it a yellow cast, but only a small amount. The tone of the clouds just above the horizon is lighter, but I'm still using my same cloud shadow mixture but with a little more titanium white added. I've also mixed in just the smallest amount of quinacridone crimson. Once I've established the rough shapes of the clouds, I then move on to the sky. For this I'm using a number 6 flat brush and I start with just a mixture of titanium white and cobalt blue. I'm keeping the value of the sky lighter as it's nearer the horizon. But as we move up in the painting, I start introducing more cobalt blue and ultramarine blue. I fill in the negative spaces around the clouds, which is also going to help to define their shapes. Once I've painted the sky, I then go back to the cloud shadows and just fill in some of those half tones between the shadows and the areas that are in light. Next, I move on to painting the sea. Now, as this video is about painting clouds, I'm going to mainly focus on this area but I'll still explain some of my processes behind painting the sea and rocks in the foreground and give you some general pointers. Now when it comes to painting the horizon of the sea, I usually like to do it with one swift brush mark. As the sea here is in shadow, I'm using a mixture of ultramarine blue with some yellow oxide and a small amount of titanium white. I've also used the same colours for the shadow areas in the foreground, and now when it comes to painting the sea that's in full sunlight, again I use the same colours but I've also used more titanium white to make the value lighter and I've also introduced a small amount of phthalo green. I leave some gaps in the water so I can paint the foam and the crest of the waves. For this I'm just using a combination of titanium white with some burnt sienna. I'm not worried that the white is going to mix in with the colour of the sea, because I'm going to come back to it later on in the painting. The foam and white water in the foreground is in shadow, so I'm going to need a darker tone in order to paint this. For this I'm just using a simple combination of titanium white mixed with some ultramarine blue and a little burnt sienna to desaturate. I'm using my number 6 flat brush to mark in the general areas where the white water is going to go. The rocks in the foreground are tonally some of the darkest elements within the painting, especially as they're in shadow. They help with the composition and a part of the story of the painting, but they're not the main focal area, so I'm keeping these rocks more subdued. The rocks are of a low chroma or saturation, so I'm going to use a simple combination of yellow oxide with some burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And then for some of those lighter areas, I'm just going to mix in a small amount of titanium white. I finish up the blocking in stage by painting in the areas in light on the headland. There's lots of golden yellows, pale greens and browns within the headland, but it's in the distance, so I need to keep the colour desaturated, as greens and yellows tend to drop out the further away they are. If the colour's too saturated, it's just going to leap forward in the painting, and we'll lose that atmospheric depth. So, it's important that the saturation of the colour is in harmony with the shadows in the headland, and appropriate to where it's situated in the painting. I mix the areas in light on the headland with a combination of yellow oxide, some quinacridone crimson, ultramarine blue and titanium white. The ultramarine blue and quinacridone crimson is going to desaturate the yellow, as when these two colours are combined they make a violet. Violet is opposite to yellow on the colour wheel and so it desaturates the colour. I then adjust the tone by mixing in titanium white. Once the blocking in stage is complete, I leave the painting to dry for a couple of days before I can begin the modelling phase and adding detail. 
When I return to the painting, I begin working on the area that's furthest away within the painting, and that's the sky. I first of all just tidy up that area in the distance, where there's cloud cover. I mix a lighter tone of titanium white with some ultramarine blue, a little burnt sienna and a very small amount of quinacridone crimson. And I just tidy up the distant clouds near the horizon. And it also helps to fill in the negative spaces and define the shape of the headland. I'm using a number 4 flat brush and I'm going to start adding more highlights to these clouds. And I'm going to make sure that my layer is lighter in value than the first layer I applied during the blocking in stage. So for this I'm still using a combination of titanium white with a small amount of burnt sienna. And I'm still going to allow the shadow mixture to mix in with this once I start applying it in just a moment. I'm marking in where the key highlights are and I'm starting to add more definition to the clouds. I'm also feathering and softening the edges of some of those clouds. Once I've marked in more of these cloud highlights, which I admit do look like blobs at the moment, I then immediately return to painting and defining the cloud shadows. And again I'm mostly using a mixture of ultramarine blue with some burnt sienna and titanium white. And I restate some of these dark areas and the bases of these clouds. The cloud bases can often be some of the darkest areas of the clouds, so this is a good way of adding more definition to the clouds in your painting. Once I've painted some solid cloud bases, I mix in a little more titanium white and paint some of those half tones within the clouds, and then blend in some of that cloud shadow with the highlights that I applied earlier. There are a few fluffy areas of clouds that are particularly dark, and they are likely to be darker the further forward they're coming in the painting. They're also adding drama to the clouds, and atmosphere to the whole painting, communicating blustery, showery weather conditions. Now this process takes a little bit of time as I work on individual areas of the clouds. I may need to add more shadow in places, and then more highlight and back and forth. Take your time and have fun with it. I can further define the shape of the clouds by restating the sky, and this is the same colours that I used in the blocking in stage, which was mostly cobalt blue with a little ultramarine blue and titanium white. Now the beauty of the sky mix is that I can use it to not only further define the shapes of the clouds, but make changes to them if I'm not happy with it. And this actually was the case with this painting. I felt that the large cloud within the upper section of this painting was too distracting and taking up too much space and needed breaking up a bit. So I was able to use my sky mix to quickly fragment some of those clouds and then I could just easily restate some of those highlight and shadow areas. The beauty of painting clouds due to their amorphous nature is that they're easy to fix if you're not happy with them. I skim over the clouds with a bit of extra highlight mix and then I'm going to leave them to dry again so that I can add some final details to them. So now I'm going to work on the rest of the painting. I restate the shadows in the headland and paint some more of those highlights before spending some time working on the sea. I'm using the same colours in the sea that I used in the blocking in stage. So for the dark areas, a combination of ultramarine blue with yellow oxide and a little titanium white to adjust the value. And then for the areas that are in sunlight, ultramarine blue with yellow oxide, some phthalo green and titanium white. I'm using smaller brushes for finer details. I add more highlight to the foam on the breaking wave, but at this stage I'm still making the value a little darker so that I can add some highlights right at the end of the painting. I'm using a bristle dagger brush which is ideal for painting foam, as I can use the flat end to create sea spray. And then I can also use the tip of the brush 
to paint some of those foam patterns. I also use a bristle dagger brush for the foam and white water that's in the foreground. Again, I can use the brush to communicate turbulent water and sea spray. Some of the ripples within the waves are reflecting the sky. So for this, I use a mixture of cobalt blue with some titanium white. I'm now adding much more detail to this area of the painting. When I paint the rocks in the foreground, I restate some of those dark areas and add in more cracks and fissures that are within the rocks. I'm going to use these as a base to work from so I can start painting in more of those rock tones where I'm going to define the shape of the rocks. I'm still using the same colours I was using in the blocking in stage, which is a combination of yellow oxide, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue and titanium white. And I use them in varying amounts to let some of those individual colours come through. I'm also at this point using smaller brushes, mainly number one round brushes. I still need to keep the colour of these rocks relatively dark and subdued. I finish up the clouds and sky by adding some highlights to a few areas of those clouds. And this is where I'm going to be using my lightest values. So for this I mix a combination of titanium white but then I also introduce just a little yellow oxide and a small amount of burnt sienna which is going to give it a nice orangey yellow cast to it. I also use this highlight mix to accentuate some of those clouds that are in the distance. I use a number two filbert brush to mark in some of those highlights. And once that's done, the sky is complete. As I work towards completing the painting, I'm just thinking about adding in those final details and highlights to the distant headland, the sea and the rocks. I add my lightest values to the white water in the breaking waves that are illuminated in the full sunlight. And for this I'm just using titanium white with a very small amount of cadmium yellow. I complete the painting by adding in a couple of seagulls which really adds a bit of life and atmosphere to the whole scene. And now that the painting is complete I can now peel off that masking tape. Peeling away the masking tape in my opinion is when the painting really comes to life because it takes away the busyness from the edge of the painting and you can see what it truly looks like. By leaving some excess around your painting, it'll give you the option to either mount it on stretcher bars or a board. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to learn more about painting, then check out the painting resources I have on my website at samuelerp.com, where I've got written painting tutorials and videos. If you have any comments, feedback, or suggestions for future videos you'd like me to make, then leave them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Also, I definitely welcome suggestions for future videos that you'd like me to make. If you'd like to see more of my art and what I'm working on at the moment, then you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I've put the links in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about painting, then check out the painting resources on my website at samuelerp.com. My painting blog has lots of free written painting tutorials and reference photos that you can paint along with. I have a selection of in-depth painting videos where I show you how to paint an artwork from start to finish, including how to mix the colours which I demonstrate on my palette, and art theory made easy which I explain in the context of each video so you can learn as you paint. And I also have a painting tutorial video subscription service on my Patreon profile at patreon.com forward slash Samuel underscore Earp underscore artist. All the website links can be found in the description below. 
Thanks for watching and happy painting!